On to the eighth and final stage of the Dauphiné. Jonas Vingegaar has stamped his authority all over this race and he is set to win it for the first time today. He could even round things out in style with another stage victory, although he says that is not the number one priority. I'm not going full gas for the win today. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we think more about defending the jersey today than, uh, than thinking about the stage win. So, uh, yesterday I really wanted to go for the win and uh, yeah, we did. And uh, today we, we think more about defending. Meanwhile, there'll be a fierce battle for the podium with only a handful of seconds separating Yates, O'Connor and Hindley before today's brutal final it's climb. The last, the last climb of the day after a really hard week of racing, so uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see who's there or who's around the mark and uh, yeah, hopefully I can be there. Yeah, I think it will be a super aggressive day. Uh, everyone all in, probably all the teams uh, throwing everything at it today. The mountains classification will also be settled. The current king of the mountains, Victor Campenarts, will have to be aggressive if he wants to hold off the competition. It will be a very tough start. Uh, a lot of riders um, will try to get in the breakaway. It's the last chance. Um, I will try to be in, but uh, it will be very difficult. If I get in the break, I will try to stay in front, just like any other rider. Stage 8 is a roller coaster routing of 153 kilometres with 4,000 metres of elevation gain. Six climbs in total, including the Hoare category Col du Granier, which is 9.6 kilometres at 8.6%. The final hike to La Bastille, meanwhile, is absolutely hellish 1.8 kilometres at an eye watering 14.2%. It's an XXL version of the iconic Mur de Huy. Julian Alaphilippe had decided to celebrate his 31st birthday by going up the road. The former world champion began the day seventh overall after what he has described as a magnificent week at this Dauphiné. Campenarts had been part of the earlier breakaway, taking 10 points over the first two climbs, but by the Col du Granier, there were only four men in the lead. Alaphilippe, Giulio Ciccone, Clement Champoussin and Tish Benoit, one of Vingegaard's lieutenants. They were being chased by Jonathan Castroviejo and David de la Cruz with the Jumbo Visma led peloton only a minute and 25 seconds back. It wasn't looking ideal then for the escapees. De la Cruz was eventually caught, but Castroviejo pushed on as they hit the Col de Coucheron with the gaps remaining steady. Castroviejo joining the breakaway just before the summit, making it five at the front. Benoit first over the line, followed by Ciccone and Champoussin. This quintet working together to reach the foot of the Col de Port with the peloton still around a minute and a half back. Then with 24k to go, Ciccone put in a stinging attack. Only Alaphilippe was able to hold on with Champoussin, Benoit and Castroviejo falling away. The Italian looking on supreme form. Castroviejo and Bonneau were struggling to close the gap as Champoussin was caught by the GC favourites. Vingegaard and co inching ever closer and so 3k from the summit to Ciccone went again and this time Alaphilippe couldn't follow. Further back Adam Yates attacked from the peloton with Vingegaard just easing his way into the wheel. Little by little the GC group came back together with the likes of O'Connor, Hindley, Haig and Mata and they soon caught up to Alaphilippe. Ciccone had around 30 seconds when he got to the summit as Antonio Pedrero also made a move. The riders sweeping down towards the fearsome final climb of this Dauphiné. Ciccone embarking on La Bastille with 50 seconds in hand, enough for a climber of his calibre to go for the win. The gradient's really starting to hurt as Vingegaard pulled clear of the GC group, followed by Yates. but they wouldn't catch up to Ciccone, the Italian rounding out his week on a high note. Well, Ciccone hasn't got the sunglasses to throw to the crowd today, but it looks like he's going to take the victory. Giulia Ciccone of Trek Sega Fredo uh, comes up to the top of La Bastille, 20 kilometers solo. His 10th win of his career and the third win of a great season. Behind him now, 
Jonas Vengegaard has ridden away from all the other favourites. It's not going to be the victory today, but Jonas Vengegaard is now ready for the Tour de France. July beckons, the form is so impressive. Ever since he took the Tour de France's yellow jersey at the Superplanche de Belfi in 2019, we've known that Ciccone can handle himself on the steep climbs. The Trek Segafredo leader storming up La Basti to take his 10th career win after the frustration of missing the Giro d'Italia because of a late COVID-19 positive, this will really boost his confidence before the Tour. As a bonus, he also nabbed the polka dot jersey. The last 500 was really, really long. <laughs> but you know, we, with all the people, with all the people there, it uh, was, really, was really nice. And also, when I look behind, I saw that I was, uh, I mean, I was still in uh, front with the uh, sun gap, so I just straight, uh, I went straight. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy. Ciccone taking his third win of the season ahead of the top three overall, Vingegaard, Yates and O'Connor. An impressive fifth place for Guillaume Martin ahead of Jai Hindley. Vingegaard completing a dominant week. It's of course very, very big for me to uh, to win this race. It's uh, one of the biggest races in the world. So, uh, so of course, I'm very, very happy to, to win. And uh, once again, the, the team did amazing today. They were really super, super strong. And uh, I was never alone. So, uh, so yeah, that was uh, completely perfect what they what they did today. Vingegaard securing his third stage race of 2023 after Gran Camino in Estulia Basque Country with the biggest winning margin of the 21st century. Three Aussies in the top five with Martin the highest placed Frenchman in sixth. Alaphilippe was just inside the top ten. Christophe Laporte led the green jersey standings from start to finish. In the end his nearest challenger was his teammate Vingegaard 14 points back. There was a fantastic battle for polka dots with Giacone pipping Campanarts at the last. The Belgian appeared to have done enough, but a superb haul of 41 points on the final stage handed the Italian a narrow victory. The white jersey also changed hands on the final day, with Carlos Rodriguez finishing as the best young rider. We will no doubt be seeing plenty more of the Spanish champion and riders like Paul, Johansson and Martinez. It has been a Dauphiné demonstration from Jonas Vingegaard. Last year's Tour de France winner is definitely ready to defend his title in a few weeks' time. Do join us again on July the 1st when it all kicks off in Bilbao. And thanks very much for watching.